word of the gospel. We thank you, dear Lord, for bringing him here and guide his feet in the right direction and let his words always speak the wisdom and the truth of you, dear Lord. If he goes from West Baltimore, South Baltimore, to the county, to the city, to the ghettos, to the slum, there's only one true word of God. So let him continue to hear the word and speak the word. Dear Lord, we ask that you be a protective shield. Jesus, be a fence all around him as he comes and goes. Dear Lord, we know that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. But let him continue to speak your word, dear Lord, because without you, dear Lord, we thank you for the blessings that we have received this morning. Brother Brown, we thank you. He thanks you for blessing him and his family this morning. But dear Lord, he knows that the blessing is not about him. He knows that he is in the blessing. So he can be a blessing to everybody else. Let the church say amen. 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 In the St. Cecilia Church on this wonderful, I'm sorry, where am I? Immaculate Conception. Same church. Same church. Well, I'm in the Immaculate Conception. Y'all know y'all. Same. That's it. That's right. Twin congregation. Amen. Glad to be in the Immaculate Conception Church on tonight with St. Cecilia worshiping with you all together. Amen. Amen. We got it right. There we go. There we go. Amen. Thank God for the privilege to come into this house on this Tuesday evening, even with the rain going on outside, rain falling, we thank God that the sun is still shining on the inside of this place because we have him shining down in our hearts. Is he in your heart going tonight? Well, if he's in your heart, in spite of what the weather's doing on the outside, on the inside, you still ought to be all right. Amen. Get, get your Bibles, go with me to the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Thank all of the congregants from the Greater Harvest Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Lady Brown. Amen. I haven't heard Pastor Tommy Jenkins play in years. <laughs> So good to see Pastor Tommy Jenkins on the instrument tonight. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. The Bible says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Just for the next few moments as we shall open up this revival, let's talk sermonically from this thought in mind. Don't worry, be happy. Why don't you be so kind with me and look at somebody then you tell them, don't worry, don't worry, be happy. Be happy. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart be acceptable in in thy sight. Thank you, Lord, for being our strength and redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Don't worry, be happy. Pastor Jenkins, in 1988, Mr. Bobby McFerrin wrote a very popular song entitled, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Yeah. Those of you who have not catched on to the lyrics in which I'm speaking of on tonight, let me just remind you of a few of the lyrics. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry, be happy. In every life we have some trouble. When you worry, you make it double. Don't worry, be happy. Yes, sir. Ain't got no place to lay your head. 
Somebody came and took your baby. Don't worry. Be happy. The landlord say your rent is late. He may have to litigate. But don't worry. Be happy. Ain't got no cash. Ain't got no style. Ain't got no gal to make you smile. But don't worry. Be happy. Yeah. Because when you're weary, your face will frown. And that'll bring everybody down. So don't worry. Be happy. Yes, sir. In church tonight, I'm convinced that Mr. Bobby McFerrin understood something that I want to relate to you on this wonderful Tuesday evening. And that is that our happiness should never be tied up in people. Happiness should never be tied up in places nor things. And just in case this week you have psyched yourself out to believe that happiness resides in money, I come with a little remedy for you. Just in case this week you have psyched your mind out to believe that happiness resides in cars and land, I come with a little remedy for you tonight. And it's found in this sixth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthews, where we find our Lord Jesus Christ standing on the mountaintop beginning to preach what we affectionately call the Sermon on the Mount. The Lord opens up this wonderful discourse with introducing unto all of those who are listening to his voice the Beatitudes, where he places a litany of blessings, if you will, upon all of those who are standing around listening to his tranquil voice. He reminds all of those, my brothers and sisters, listening unto him, that blessed are the poor. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that hunger. Because in spite of what they were going through, they still would or still should be considered blessed. Because ultimately the Lord has something else in store for them in spite of what they were currently going through. And right there, that's a message for somebody who came to revival tonight who might be going through a little something. That attached to your something on the other side of your something still remains blessing. The Lord reminds them that they are blessed in spite of whatever it is they are going through in their life. And then the Lord begins to continue his teaching on forgiveness. He reminds them that they ought to love their enemies. He reminds them that they ought to continue to pray for everybody. He even teaches on fasting. Told them that if you're going to fast, don't you do it for outside show to the world. If you're going to fast, don't try to twist up your face and leave spit on your in your eyes so people can ask you questions, what's going on with you? And so that you can tell them that you're fasting. He said, no, if you're going to pray, if you're going to fast, just go into your secret closet. Yeah. And there in your secret closet, when you talk to your Lord, that same Lord will reward you openly. Uh, He teaches on fasting, teaches on praying. Then he reminds them to never store up your treasures down here on earth. Where the New Living Translation contends that the mothballs will get it. That the worms will eat it up. But it says if you're going to store up something, store your treasures in heaven. Where you don't have to worry about thieves breaking in. Where you don't have to worry about fire breaking out at night. And then our Lord, as he continues this Sermon on the Mountain, continues to teach on what I'd like to talk about on tonight, began to teach on worry. Yes, child of God, that's what our Lord began to teach on. He does it around this 25th verse of this 6th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. Yes, he began to teach on that thing that has caused many people to lose sleep at night. He began to teach on that thing that has caused a many persons to pull hair out of their hands. He began to teach on that thing in which many people have began to stress themselves 
over. Yes, he begins to teach on worry. And here's how he does it, ladies and gentlemen. Here's how he does it, brothers and sisters. He says, therefore, don't you take no thought for your life on what you're going to eat, on what you're going to wear. He said, don't you worry about tomorrow, what's going to happen on the next day. He reminds them that I've got some lilies out in the field. And those lilies out in the field, they don't toil. But guess what? Those lilies that are out in that field are clothed and fought with far more beauty than even King Solomon and all his glory. He says, I've got some birds out there flapping in the air. And even those birds, they don't got a job. They don't work. They don't have to take care of nothing. But I watch over birds that's flying in the air and they ain't got a job. I watch over lilies that's out there growing in a field and they don't toil either. Don't you think that I'll watch over you if I got birds in the air that I'm covering? If I got lilies out in a field that I'm clothing? And there's a message on tonight for somebody who has been stressing themselves out, pulling hair out of their head, pulling, 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 pulling themselves out the bed in the middle of the night, losing sleep over nothing, trying to stress yourself out, worrying and being frustrated, flustered with the cares of life and the weight that's upon your shoulder. If God can clothe lilies out in the field, if God can watch them ravens flying up in the air, don't you think your God will watch over each and every last one of you all tonight? And that's a message for somebody who came to this opening night of revival. That's a word that the Lord wanted somebody to hear on this wonderful Tuesday evening. That if you watch over birds and if you watch over grass, don't you think you're worth more than some grass and some birds? Oh, this is why the psalmist puts it this way. That if he can watch over a little spell, certainly I understand he'll watch over me. And the truth is, there's many of your testimony on tonight that God has covered you, that God has watched over you, that God has protected you, that God has clothed you in his grace and bathed you in his glory, that, that God has watched over you day and by night. Angels, they kept their watch over you. And even
just simple. They are minute, if you will, when it comes to your God. If I watch over that, don't you think I'm going to cover you? But here it is, after he renders unto them all of these things that our God can place upon us. He then began to suggest uh, that there is in fact something you do have to do. Yeah. That after you come to the realization that your God is bigger than your problems, there are something you do have to do. Come on. Uh, he says that listen, wearing that thing, that thing that stretches you out, that, that stuff that Gentiles do. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff yeah. that people who don't believe in me yeah. do. When, when you don't trust in me, then you're wary. When, when you don't depend on me, that, that's the kind of stuff that people who don't have clout in God do. Yeah, yeah, Lord yeah, have mercy. I feel like yeah. preaching a little bit tonight. They said, they said, but guess what? Don't you take no thought saying what she shall eat. If you kept your Bibles open, leave here in verse 31. Don't you take no thought saying what you shall eat or what you shall drink or whatever. Ye shall be clothed. For after all, that's verse 32. Do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Ah, uh, but then he lays his head exactly where I have recited unto you tonight. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He says, I got you covered. I, I got your back. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat. You don't have to get frustrated about what you're going to drink. Your God got you. But you do got to do something. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. Then I'm going to give you all this uh, uh, let me submit unto you tonight. Once we break this little thing down, we'll be done. Uh, he says, seek the kingdom of God. Look at what it says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. First, you got to seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. Can I submit unto you tonight that Jesus teaches the disciples that you don't have to worry, that you don't have to be frustrated, that you don't have to be flustered, you don't have to be stressed out. If you, number one, pursue the will of God. Let me say that again. You don't have to be stressed out, you don't have to be wary, you don't have to pull hair out your head. If you, first of all, pursue the will of God. He says, seek kingdom. In other words, seek God's will. Uh, when you seek the kingdom of God, in essence, it is going after what God wants. It's filling your thoughts with God's desires. It's taking on the character of God. And just in case you forgot tonight, somebody may have slipped, may have slipped somebody mind who's sitting up in revival tonight what the will of God is, but let me remind you that his will is found all throughout this entire Bible. If you just flip open the pages, it'll tell you a little bit about his will tonight. It'll tell you about his will when it suggests that man shall not eat by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It can tell you about his will when it suggests that ye are the salt of the earth. It reminds us of his will when it tells us that ye are the light of the world. It tells you about his will when it reminds you that you ought to let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. His will teaches us that you ought to love your enemies, that you ought to bless them that curse you, that you ought to do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. It tells us that his will that is, is that upon this rock I'll build 
seek. Seek the kingdom. Yes, sir. Seek the kingdom. And then he does not suggest that you should simply seek kingdom. But here's how he submits it tonight. Seek first the kingdom of yes, God. Yes. 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 Right. Seek first, first. first. That's right. That's right. the kingdom of God. Can I submit unto you that Jesus teaches his disciples and all of those who are standing around listening to his tranquil voice as he preaches this sermon on the mountain that you don't have to worry, you don't have to be stressed, you don't have to fret, you don't have to lose sleep at night. Not only if you learn to seek a kingdom of God, go after the will of God, but here it is, if you make the kingdom of God your priority. Yeah. He said you've got to prioritize my will in your life. Yes. In other words, make the will of God above all else. In essence, before you go after anything else, go after the will of God. Yeah. Here it is, don't just go after him, but go after him first. And I know tonight, I know tonight, I, I've got a few people in the house who may be suggesting, well, I've got a whole lot going on in my life. i got to drop the kids off in the morning. i got to get my clothes laid out. i, I got to handle all my business. i got stuff to do. I, I got things I got to handle. But let me submit unto you tonight that before you get yourself up, can you at least whisper a little prayer in the morning? That before you eat your lunch, can you just whisper a little prayer in the afternoon? That before you lay your head down at night, can you at least whisper a little prayer in the evening? That before you go about your busy day, can you just pause and figure out that maybe God you to do something throughout the day before you do what's on your agenda. Can you figure out what he's got on his agenda before you do what you got in your plans? Can you just figure out what he got in his plan? Uh, let me submit unto you tonight and I'll pledge a promise I'll case it on. One of the leading things or one of the leading relationship killers is losing connection with one another. Yeah. One of the leading things that uh, people contend will, will, will pull persons apart is losing relationship with one another. And so, or, or losing connection, if you will, with one another. So instead of you spending time, you, you doing your own thing, he doing his own thing, she doing her own thing. They, everybody on their own time. Uh, and, and, and for those of you tonight who may have been thinking uh, that, that you have lost some uh, connection with our great God, the question is, what are you doing with your time? Uh, it's all about prioritizing. And so instead of you doing what you want to do all the time, take into consideration what God wants you to do. Oh, uh, look at your neighbor as you help me preach this thing. I promise you I'll be done in two more moments. But look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you got to prioritize that thing. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and his righteousness. Uh, many of us, when we look at this word uh, righteous, we, we automatically jump to uh, being in right standing with God. When we think of the word righteousness, many of us automatically jump to being in right relationship with God. But if you look at this word righteousness in the totality of this text, if you look at this word righteousness when it, as the writer, as the Lord, our God really speaks it unto us. He's not just speaking of being righteous in the form of right relationship with God. God, not just being in right standing with God, but here it is, righteousness also means uh, trusting God's justice, God's fairness. In other words, trust God to be fair. It, it, it suggests 
saying uh, uh, that when or, or when you say God is righteous or you're saying that God is just, it's suggesting that his actions towards us are in perfect agreement with his nature. In other words, it's it's a what I like to suggest a branch of God's grace. It, it's trusting God to do the right thing on your behalf. Okay, let me see if I can put it where you can get it and we'll get out of here. When, when, whenever you see a court case happening and you take the witness stand, it's your duty to trust the attorney, to trust the lawyers, to trust the judge and the jury to give you the right verdict based upon the evidence that has been presented. And so in other words, the righteousness of God is trusting our God to give you the right verdict based upon the evidence that has been presented. And so tonight, I come to the bench of farewell right here, but I come to remind you, child of God, that if you desire not to worry, what you got to do is trust God to be fair. And the last time I checked the record, Pastor Jenkins, he's been mighty fair with me. Just fair. Sister Clark, he's beyond fair. 
he, he, he don't just work it out, but he he goes beyond the call of duty. Because if we, when we look at some stuff we've done, some places we've been, some 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 ditches we fell in, some, some valleys we journeyed through. You can testify that the grace and mercy of God has covered you, has sustained you, has lifted you. Is that your testimony on tonight?